everyone. Welcome to Mark's Finance and Fitness. Today I want to go over a stock that if you're a dividend investor, you probably own this stock or at least have heard of it. And that's 3M. 3M is a, a stock that pays a healthy dividend for its industry. And it's one that I invest in myself. And so I want to go over an analysis of this stock. And if I think it's a buy, a hold, or a sell and some prospects on its future. So 3M is an American multinational conglomerate corporation operating in the fields of industry, worker safety, US healthcare, and consumer goods. And this company, it is a massive company. <laughs> it has over 55,000 products and operates in 65 countries. And you know, if you look at their site here, you can see all their products that they sell. These are all their products. And I'm sure when you click into one of these fields, the list is massive. Uh, to have 55,000 products is very impressive. And so with 3M, I own this myself. I own seven shares and I'm up 18.84%. And so it's done really well for me. I think that's mainly because I bought during the dip of the pandemic. And you know, so having that dividend and that growth has been nice. Um, I don't think um, the future prospects are that high of a growth and that we're, this is what we're going to go over. Um, but again, I'm going to go over if it's a buy, a sell or a hold and what its future might look like. And so looking at its competitors, this is interesting. If we look at its competitors, they have all decreased in revenue over the last 10 years where 3M is the only company on this stock, uh, stock chart that has gone up. And, you know, that is a good sign if you hold 3M compared to any of these companies. That makes me happy as an investor. And, you know, their, their revenue, their earnings per share, and their free cash flows have all gone up compared to these other companies. And so that's a great thing. Now, the big thing with 3M is, of course, it's dividend. This is what's attractive about 3M. They pay a 2.97% dividend yield. Now, let's compare that to the S&P 500, which pays 1.36% currently. That's one of, that's <laughs> compared to its history, that's extremely low. And then if you look at the industry that 3M is in, they pay a 0.29% dividend yield. So to get almost a 3% yield in this company, in the industrial sector, is very impressive. Their payout ratio is 58% which I think is healthy. I think the dividend is safe. I'd like to see it go more towards 50%, but that's a very, uh, I think, safe dividend for now. Even more so, they've been paying out their dividend for the last 100 years, more than 100 years, and the last 63 years consecutively increasing that dividend year over year. Uh, so that's what I like to see as a dividend investor. And of course, History is important, but when it comes to stocks and investing, you got to look to the future. Uh, so that's what we're going to kind of look at here. And so the segments that 3M invests in, uh, you know, healthcare being one of them, this is where their products kind of fall into. Uh, the average growth of all the sectors and product lines that 3M sells is expected to be 8.35% growth. And you know, that's not bad, but there's a lot of companies out there pulling higher numbers. For example, Apple. Apple, in the last 10 years, has grown 17% on average on their revenue. And their future is probably going to look very similar. Of course, that's comparing apples to oranges. Ha ha. But uh, just to give you an example. So what is it about 3M that we're going to go over? Well, I read an article that kind of has more of a bearish view on 3M. They kind of talk about how their moat is shrinking. 3M has a big moat, as I mentioned, 55,000 products in 65 countries that they operate out of. They have a large moat. That's what I like to see as an investor. But there is some concern with the moat, you know, shrinking some bit. There's some concerns with employee and management satisfaction, which can affect a company. Um, you know, the competition is a concern. These are things that we're going to go over. So let's talk about their competition. In these two um, SNPs that I take, this is their competition. In all the different sectors and sections of the market that they produce their products out to, these are their competitors. Big names like Hyundai and Oracle and Snowflake 
And if we look at this other one, you know, they're going up against Johnson & Johnson, Sherwin-Williams, Home Depot. These are all strong, competitive, successful companies that have done extremely well in the market. And so that is one concern that investors, you know, should be aware of is that they have so much competition going against them because of their wide moat. And my concern is, is their moat, uh, I like the big moat that they have, but do they have so many products in all these areas that it's gonna be hard to really focus strategically on competing against these big name companies that have probably more of a sharp um, target on you know their products and so that's one area of concern that you have to keep in mind that might affect their stock price in the future another um, thing I want to talk about which is actually a strong point is the patents that they have of course they have a lot of products um, and so they have over a hundred eighteen thousand patents and they produce about they issue about four thousand patents a year uh, so let's compare that to Apple since we brought in Apple, Apple to oranges. Um, Apple has a total of 4,100 patents compared to 118,000. And in 2020, they issued 488 patents. So big difference there. So I think 3M does a great job at protecting their products, their assets, and you know making sure that that, that is under wraps. So I, I like that about 3M. Now let's talk about technology and innovation. They pride themselves on science, engineering, and manufacturing competency. And I do think that that shines, right? Because they are developing and producing new products consistently. Uh, you wouldn't have that many products if you don't have a strong science, engineering, and manufacturing competency. So I think they're doing well there. The only concern that I have that can slow that down is that they have over 6,000 lawsuits against them currently, against their products, some of their products. And so I think that can definitely slow them down as they have to focus on that and possibly make changes depending on the outcome of these lawsuits. So something to keep in mind that could bring their stock down. Another area I wanna talk about is research and development. I think they're very competitive here. I think they invest a lot into their R&D. So that is a bright spot. The only thing that kind of clouds that is all other successful companies do the exact same thing. So again, it becomes a competition thing. Their R&D is strong, but so are all these other companies. So it really is, um, it's hard, right? Because they're competing and all companies are trying to be innovative and do their R&D. And so that's just one area that you just have to keep in mind that they have that competition going on. Now let's talk about their brand and vision. I think this is very interesting. I think that their products are well known by certain groups, but not well known by the vast majority of the population. So if you're in the labor market, construction, if you own a home and you do your own um, projects and repairs, if you shop at home improvement stores often, you probably know about 3M. But if you're not one of the, in one of those groups, you probably don't know what 3M is or can name a product of it. I think 3M is more well known by the older generations and not the younger generations. And so the brand awareness I think has taken a hit. And so I see this as a negative for them. I think they really need to work on customer loyalty. If you look at Apple, everyone knows Apple and Apple products, whether you own one or not. And they're in most households across the world. 3M, if you ask anybody, hey, do you have 3M products in your house? Most people are gonna say, no, or I don't think so, or I need to check. They need to get that brand awareness and that vision stronger in order to survive. Uh, or shall I say grow? They'll, you know, I think they're gonna survive, they'll be fine, but to grow, they really need that. Uh, so that's my opinion. Next, let's focus on management employees. There was an article with Seeking Alpha that recently raised concerns that there was a lot of negative reviews from their staff on Glassdoor specifically mostly in the year 2021, the year that we're in. A lot of the um, complaints are around, you know, the, the older employees that have been there 10 years plus not respecting or giving opportunity to the younger employees, not taking them seriously, that there's the lack of confidence in the growth of this company, uh, that the career and promotion growth isn't there, and that you feel like you're just a number and that there's been some layoffs where middle management wasn't involved 
And so they wonder, you know, how they even go about that and they're probably losing some good people. So my concern is when a company has a deterioration in their culture, I think that's a very negative thing and it can really hurt and harm a company because word gets out there, people leave, they go to competitors and you're losing, you know, very valuable um, assets. And so, you know, I think that it is a concern, but I also take it with somewhat of a grain of salt because with, with any review, the majority of people that are going to leave a review are the ones that have a negative experience, right? 3M is a large company. Um, so yes, I think the complaints have increased drastically this year. So something to keep in mind and look at and maybe follow and track to see if the management does anything about this. But in the big scheme of things, how big of a problem is it really? Um, so I think this is one that could hinder the, the success of the company if they don't act on it and, and get it under wraps. So with that said, those are the main points I wanted to go over that could possibly impact positively or negatively this company stock. Most of them I think are more of a bearish view. So let's look at the price target of, anal of analysts on this company. They have a high of 225 per share and a low of 183 an average of 205. Right now they're at 184.5, so they're at the lower end of the price target. And for me, I think I'm gonna agree with the analysis here and say that this company is just a hold right now. And I think that maybe there's some buying opportunity now that it's in the low 180s, and I think it's a, a decent buy, but I think it'd be a, a better buy if it drops in the 170s. That's where I would pick up some shares. And of course, below that, as the saying goes, you load the boat. <laughs> but I think with 3M, they don't have high growth revenue projections, which is a negative to me. Their dividend is solid and it has a great history. That's a positive to me. And I think they have some headwinds that I mentioned here in this video, which could hurt them. But the good thing is this company can turn these things around. They're not permanent negative things, this company has an opportunity to turn these issues around. So I think they need to focus on their winning products and kind of have a more targeted approach to really focus on those products that they you know, think will really provide more brand awareness for them. I think that they need to address these employee management concerns and turn that around because right now, you know, you need the next generation to be stepping into your company and taking it to the next level and there's, they're going to be the future leaders so you have to invest in them. I also think that they need to find a way to create reoccurring uh, revenue that's very predictable. If you look at a lot of this, you know, Apple, Microsoft, they have a lot of subscription-based services that brings in really uh, consistent, predictable revenue and does wonderful things for a company. So I think they need to focus on that as well, what they can do there. So I think starting to buy in the low 180s is, is decent. It's not a bad choice. If it goes into the 170s, I think you start buying. Uh, that's what I plan on doing. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm not a professional and I'm, this is not my advice uh, to you, for you guys to do. It's just my advice for myself that I'm sharing with you. And so uh, that's my opinion on 3M. I think it's a good dividend company uh, for growth wise. I don't think it has that right now in its projections. Uh, but I think they can turn that around in the future, in the long term. And I do see this company being around. I do see this company being around uh, for a very long time. And I do have some confidence that it will keep innovating and growing its product line. But I think it needs to do some things now to really make it a strong company that keeps investors invested and keeps them confident in their business. And so that's my analysis. I hope. This was helpful. I'd like to hear your opinions. If you agree, if you disagree, do you hold 3M? And do you plan on buying, selling, or holding yourself? And with that said, guys, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you next time on Mark's Finance and Fitness.